power system protection. The subject name is power system protection. In the power system protection, the basics, what are the basics uh, for electrical engineering, the power system protection. In the last classes, uh, we, in the previous semesters, you studied about uh, what is uh, power generation, power generation, transmission. Up to now, you studied power generation and transmission. Transmission you studied. Power generation and transmission you studied previously. Now what is power generation? In power generation, generators will be measurable. Generators generates the electrical energy. After that, we are transmitting. Generation, transmission. Now we go for another part of power system. Power generation, transmission and distribution. And another all will be generation, transmission, all effectively working. For that, we have to require protection. Protection. That is generation, transmission and distribution. For all this, for effectively working, distribution, effectively working, we require a protection. A protection is required. Power system protection, what is the introduction, now in this class we are going to discuss power system protection, introduction to power system protection, in this class we are going to discuss. In the previous classes, you studied about uh, generation, transmission and distribution. Generation, transmission and distribution you studied in previous classes. Distribution will come in final year, like that. And first year, uh, second year and uh, previously electrical power generating system, that is generation of electric power you studied. And the next is generation of uh, transmission of electric power you studied. Similarly, for generation, transmission and distribution these are the power system, majorly. Power system can be divided into generation, transmission and distribution. To effectively working of all these transmission, distribution and generation, we require protection, definitely. For your house, if uh, to work all equipments properly, we are connecting one MCB. One MCB we are connecting in your house. Or fuses, in the olden days we are connecting fuses for your house. Suppose uh, in the house, if you, if you in your house, if any part of that uh, costly equipment is there, electrical apparatus like fridges, televisions, or LCDs like that, then for your house, at the starting of energy meter, we provided a MCB. An MCB we provided at the starting of an energy meter. This MC may be equipped whenever a fault occur in distribution system in your house. Whenever the iron box gets 
short circuited in our house. What happened? The MC bubble directly drip. It is one type of protection for our home. Similarly, what are the protection devices we are using in generation, transmission, and distribution side? The unit one in the first chapter we discussed about what are the basics of protection. One is relays. The relays will be discussed in unit one. Unit one is relays. The relays we are going to discuss in unit one. In power system protection, in the first unit, the relays is the most important. If you understand this relays, entire power system protection you can easily understand. What is relay basically? If for your house, we are using a fuse. A fuse can be represented as like this, or a fuse can be represented as like this. A fuse cut out or fuse. The fuse can be used for your home or low voltage supply. Up to 11 kV only we are using fuses. If you go for substation, there is no fuse. For substation, if you go, there will be no fuse for substation. Is it right? For substations, there will be no fuse. If to up to 11 kV only we are using fuses. If you go for 11 kV transformer, distribution transformer in our houses, we are using only fuses up to 11 kV. After 33 kV or 4, uh, 420 kV or uh, above 33 kV, above 11 kV, we are not going to use the fuses. That means relays, circuit breakers and lighting arresters to protect power system. Not only the relays, a CT will be used in the relay. What are the relays basically? Basically, a relay is a device which detects the fault. It only the purpose of relay is only to detect the fault, not for operation of the circuit breaker. The actual operation will be done by circuit breaker. Because it is a it is an intimator. It is an intimator. Relay is a device that detects the fault or abnormal condition in the circuit is known as a fault. A circuit may be a fault. A circuit may be if any fault occurs in a circuit, that may be abnormal condition. Abnormal condition means the changing the fault, fault, different types of faults you study, line to line road, line to line fault, LLG fault, like that. So many types of faults are in power system. Abnormality condition, a fault is abnormal condition in any circuit. That abnormality or abnormal condition has to be detected by the relay. What are the various types of relays? Electrical, electromechanical relays. Electromechanical relays will be studied in unit 1. And static relays, those are working with the transistors and the coils, transistors and diodes and they are giving the signal for circuit breaker. Circuit breaker, actual operation will be done by circuit breaker. The symbol of circuit breaker is like this. Actual operation of circuit breaker is to break the circuit. Circuit breaker is a unit 4 in our syllabus, that is the power system protection. To operate the circuit breaker, a relay is required. What is the principle? What are the types of relays? The principle of relays, what are the requirements for relays? All this will study unit that is power system protection. Coming to unit one is relays. Different types of relays we studied. One is electromechanical relays. Electromechanical relays will be studied. After that, microprocessor relays also we will study. Because we say nowadays we are using microprocessor based relays. Microprocessor based relays we are using. Microprocessor based relays means it uses microprocessors and algorithm also required. The program is required for microprocessor based relays. All this comes under relays. What are the properties? What are the relays properties? All will come under unit one. Similarly, we go for second unit. After knowing the different types of relays, what we have to go? Now these relays are applied for these relays are applied for different apparatus, generators protection and transformers protection. Generator protection and transformer protection. Transformer protection we are going to study. 
Okay. To understand this generator protection, we are using again relays. We are using generator protection. What are the relays we are using? Differential protection will be used for generator protection. Differential scheme of relay. Again, the same relays we are applying, but in different manner. That is, generator protection will be done in different manner. That is, differential relays. Differential relays are using. See this again. Current transformers. You studied in measurements how the current transformer works. The application of current transformer is comes under relay. The application of current transformer will comes under a relay. Generator protection. Coming to transformer protection because the transformer is the main equipment in substation. If the transformer does not senses the fault, if any fault occur in transformer, the costly equipment may be damages. That means it is a huge power loss, power cut happen, service cut for different customers. If any fault occur in generator, the entire generating station may be damages because the huge generators one or two, three or four. If you go for RTPP, Karpa, there are four or five number of the generating station, generating plants, generators, alternators are four or five. If one of the generator fails, we can detect the fault. After that, we can remove to the service operations. After that, we can connect another. Similarly, transformer protection. A buckles relay will be used in the transformer protection. All what are the various faults occur in transformer? All will be a transformer protection will be done in in different manner. Internal faults, external faults, different external faults and internal faults for all types of faults. What we have to do? What how we are protecting the transformer? Transformer how we can protect generator? How can we protect? That is comes under unit two. Okay, again I am repeating. If you understand the relays, what are the functions of relays? How they are working? The principles? Then the same principle we are applying for generator protection and transformer protection. That means key points all will comes under unit one. After that, the application of relays entire four units. Are. Okay. Power system protection is the important. Why? Because it comes generation, transmission, and distribution. Now, the second unit is generation protection. Generation protection means generation how to protect. Transformer protection means how the transformer has to be protected. Thus, comes under second unit. Coming to third unit, protection of transmission lines. The third chapter is protection of feeders and transmission lines. In this class, we are going to discuss the principle of relay also. After that, we go for first unit, the third chapter in power system protection (PST) is third unit protection of protection of transfer, transmission lines and feeders. Protection of transmission lines. And feeders, feeder protection also important. Here, what are different schemes we are using for protection of transmission lines? Is generator protection. Generator may be in a room or in a enclosed enclosed house or housing. We are providing generators. Generator may be in generating plant or some area. But transmission lines can travel hundred kilometers. How can we protect them? That means merge price protection and differential protection or impedance. Relays we are using impedance relays we are using for transmission lines. Whereas feeder protection also by using impedance relays. Different types of schemes of protection available for feeder protection. Those will study in unit three. Coming to unit four, that means the protection of transmission lines and feeders. Transmission line and feeder. Feeder is what is feeder? What is transmission line? Transmission line can travel. According to length of the transmission line, you studied in power system. Transmission EPTS, that is the EV electrical power transmission system. You studied. What is transmission line? If the length of the line is less than some kilometers, that is 80 kilometers, then it is short transmission line, long transmission line, and medium transmission line. How they are working? All these are studied in EPTS. We are using conductors. So what is the set all will be? But how to protect the transmission line? If any fault occur in transmission line, hundred kilometers between forty kilometers, if any fault occur, the impedance of the line will be different. The impedance jet seen by the relay will be different. Hence, the protection of transmission line will happen. 
the impedance of the line under normal conditions first they will find suppose the length of the transmission line is 40 kilometers or 80 kilometers as under it is a short transmission line under normal working conditions what is the impedance of this transmission line because the transmission line having conductors they are having resistance in the curves the impedance of the line we will see first this is the normal impedance when over for the curve what will happen the impedance z equal to v by i the ratio of voltage to current is known as impedance when over for the curve current will increase voltage becomes reduced you know that because fault means sudden short circuit is a one fault short circuit in short circuit fuse current will be there if any two lines are fallen current will increase as voltage becomes zero current increases means impedance inversely proportional to current impedance is inversely proportional to current you know that from that we can say z is inversely proportional to current whenever current increases when current increases whenever fault occur in the transmission line current will increase this current reduces the impedance because it's a inversely proportional if the impedance seen by the relay is less than standard value or normal value then the relay will not because the transmission line protect in this manner the transmission line will be protected go for transmission line impedance protection is one of the relay impedance relays we are applying for transmission line feeders and transmission line protection is the unit for it is a for gate point of view from the power power system protection you will get some questions coming to unit 4 what is chapter 4 is chapter 4 is protection of circuit breaker the actual thing is happening by circuit breaker circuit breakers circuit breakers is the unit 4 for diploma students who are already studied in the diploma basics about circuit breakers but actual depthness will be there in a graduation in graduation you have depthness of circuit breakers circuit breaker actual circuit breaking will be done by circuit breaker the relay only detect up to now four chapters how to protect circuit breaker always connected to transmission line feeder feeder circuit breaker and substation lower in substation also we are connecting circuit breakers to protect from different apparatus transformer also connected suppose if it is a distribution transformer or power transformer a circuit breaker is connected before incoming to hv lines circuit breaker is connected because if any fault occur in transformer or any external fault occur in transmission line this fuse rating of transformer have costly equipment of transformer it is a transformer is a costly equipment in substation it is a very large equipment also if we, it if it fails due to any fault if any fault occur in transmission line this circuit breaker operates this circuit breaker how it operates that will be detected by relay okay that is circuit breaker different types of circuit breakers what are the ideal circuit breakers minimum ideal circuit breaker maximum ideal circuit breaker that is bulk ideal circuit breaker for diploma you studied mocd and the bulk bulk ideal circuit breakers up to you have you are getting 20% of your knowledge on circuit breakers actual operation arc phenomena how the arc producing in contacts of circuit breaker and circuit breaker have two contacts one is fixed contact another one is mobile contact between the two contacts an arc will exist because if you switch off if you switch off in our house instantly if it is a switch in our house instantly if you switch off an arc exists because of sudden separation of contact an arc will exist during night time in your home or if you close all windows suddenly take your finger if you switch off that switch like this that is this operation of switch that is suddenly the switch is opening that because an arc occurs spark occurs spark is a short period of duration whereas arc is for longer duration will appear this arc is a conductor actually it is a arc is a good conductor that arc has to be pinched pinched means reduced that arc how we are reducing all this will discuss in mocb bulk ion circuit breaker sf6 circuit breaker sulfur hexafluoride circuit breaker after that what is the eight circuit breakers acbs 
एयर ब्लास्ट सर्किट ब्रेकर्स एसीबीस एयर ब्लास्ट सर्किट ब्रेकर एयर ब्लास्ट सीबी एयर ब्लास्ट सर्किट ब्रेकर्स डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ सर्किट ब्रेकर्स व्हाट आर द फिनोमेना हाउ दे आर वर्किंग व्हाट आर द आर्क पिंचिंग मेथड्स आर्क रिडक्शन मेथड्स व्हाट आर द आर्क रिडक्शन मेथड्स दोस विल स्टडी इन सर्किट ब्रेकर्स आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड दिस इज अबाउट ऑल पावर सिस्टम प्रोटेक्शन total unit 4 up to unit 4 the actual circuit breaker we study in previous up to unit 3 different types of relays how the relays were applied for generators transformers and feeders and transmission lines after that we go for circuit breakers different types of circuit breaker and basic theory about circuit breakers what are the various methods to reduce the arc arc can be quenched in air also by blasting an air that is air blast circuit breaker different types of circuit breakers will study in unit 4 the diagrams how the circuit breaker operates that is very important and some numerical problems also will come in the feeder what is the relays what is the relay operating time what is the plug setting multiplier tsm tsm time setting multiplier of a relay all comes under unit 1 okay coming to unit 5 entirely syllabus what is the what are the topics to be discussed in power system protection we are going to we have to discuss in this introduction to power system protection power system protection unit 5 is power voltage protection unit 5 is another topic another chapter is unit 5 that is over voltage in power system over voltage over voltage in power system In this chapter, over voltage. What are the causes of over voltage? Sudden rise of voltage is known as surge. Suddenly, if any lighting happen during rainy season, suddenly high voltage will appear in the transmission or, or transmission lines or sub substation. If any rain appear on substation, all the equipments are working properly. With the rain and the air mixed together, the air and the rain both are combined together. in a substation like entire power will be switched off when the do you have you observed in our cities and towns whenever rain happen the power will not be cut the rain with a fuse a that power cut will happen normal air normal rain is coming if normal rain is coming no power cut you can all switch on all electrical apparatus no power cut for your power but during rain plus air that is fuse air will come if you use air will come rain plus air disturb the voltage disturb the power system protection power system equipments that is transformers transmission lines these are exposed to external environment these are exposed to external environment hence the rain and air if any fault occur you already know that voltage is power Over voltage, how will appear during lightning? Between two clouds, a lightning will appear. Between two clouds, a lightning surges will happen. During rainy season, you can observe this over voltage in power system. A sudden rise of voltage is known as surge. How to protect surge diverter, surge arresters, lightning arresters? All will come under over voltage protection. Over voltage protection. What is the lightning? What is lightning? How it happens? Suppose if it is a cloud, positively charged cloud, negatively charged cloud. Between two clouds, a lightning will appear. After that, it will reach to the earth. Earth is a earth is a ground. Or earth is a good conductor. Or earth is earth from to the earth. The the lightning will reach. The process of lightning can be reduced if it reaches to a building or power substation equipment. then fuse equipment will be suddenly damaged we can't predict what is the voltage in a such because is a lightning a fuse lightning will happen we can see in rainy season how to protect power voltage protection means lightning protection lightning arrester lightning arrester lightning arrester such diverters different types of lightning arresters what are the causes of power voltage all will study in unit 5 this is about introduction to power system protection now we go for unit 1 that is chapter 1 is relays okay the four three five units related to power system protection we studied previously now we go for relays that 
is chapter 1 or unit 1 is relay chapter 1 is relay what is a relay electro there are the different types of relay is a device it is a relay is the apparatus which detect the fault and give the signal to the circuit breaker to open that that is the purpose of relay a relay is a electromechanical device it may be a static device it may be a microbusser based relay also three types of relays we are going to discuss now basically what is the relay and how it works we have to know for that for the sake purpose of that we are going to take one bus bar after that it is a one line from connected to bus bar assume that is a three phase but for clarity purpose we taken one line three phase line we can consider but to understand principle of relay we have to consider one one line if any fault occur in this line that has to be protected if a load is connected to this line assume that it is a bus bar it is a bus bar it is visible or not up to this it is visible hence again we are drawing here for understanding better understanding purpose we are considering a bus bar from the bus bar the feeder or any line will go to the distribution box assume that it is a three phase line but for understanding purpose we consider single line diagram it is connected to load some load may be there assume that a current will flow in this line a current i always flowing in the line to protect this line uh, to protect the load also we are using a relay a relay is here we are connecting the circuit breaker circuit breaker circuit breaker what are the parts inside a circuit breaker having one trip coil one coil will be there in every circuit breaker bulk coil circuit breaker or minimal circuit breaker or air blast circuit breaker it is the coil related to circuit breaker this coil only opens the circuit breaker contacts circuit breaker has fixed contact and moving contact already this circuit breaker construction all will be studied in unit 4 but assume that circuit breaker have one coil one it is a circuit breaker symbol it is a circuit breaker symbol this coil related to circuit breaker if any fault occur how to detect the fault by taking one ammeter we can detect fault ammeter is suitable for only up to 20 amps or 30 amps for larger currents 1000 amps we can't go for ammeter hence we are using to measure the larger current we are using cd to measure the larger current we are using cd where we have to connect the cd is in the line the symbol of cd you know the symbol of cd what is the symbol of cd this is the symbol of cd the symbol of cd now the symbol cd is connected in the line whenever it gives current up here the cd always senses the fault current after that it gives the signal the cd is connected to relay operating coil relay operating coil relay is a device which operate which detect the fault abnormal the condition in the circuit now it is a relay coil relay also having one coil actually microbusser based relays does not have any coil but relay actual electromechanical relay it is it is a relay coil this relay coil one mobile contact is there it is known as plunger plunger is connected it is a normally open normally no terminal this is a plunger it is a normally open terminal for operation of a circuit breaker we require a dc supply a dc supply is connected to this circuit breaker circuit breaker coil a dc supply is connected normally in substations uh, there is a batteries we are provided the battery supplying the power for circuit breakers on different uh, control circuits control circuits are uh, in the substation also but because the substation we are continuously power will be there don't remember that uh, 
continuing substation power always will be there. But DC voltage is required. In substation, DC voltage will not be there. In a normal pathetic case substation, AC voltage is there, may be there. But in substation, they are providing batteries. The batteries are required to give control panel or to control the different operators in the substation. They we are connecting a battery. Similarly, the battery is connected to circuit breaker. Circuit breaker coil. Now it is a normally open condition. Now the coil is in normally open condition. This is the NO contact. This is a plunger which is connected to relay coil. Plunger, it is a relay coil. It is known as trip coil. It is known as trip coil and another one is relay coil. Trip coil, circuit breaker has to be tripped. Circuit breaker opening means trip. Trip coil of circuit breaker is and whereas it is a relay coil, it is a CT. CT, what are the principle of CT you studied previously? But what is how the CT works? You can see here. The CT, whenever normal current flows, normal current will flow through secondary of CT. Secondary of CT is connected to relay coil. Normally, what is, what is CT here? CT have kind of larger single turn or two turns with thick wire, a lot number of turns are there for secondary and it is connected to ammeter that is basically you study it in measurements. CT have primary less number of turns whereas uh, secondary is connected to meter. But the symbol of CT is like this. Secondary of CT is connected to relay coil. Whenever 500 amps or 500 amps is the normal current assume that in a line. At that moment some current will flow that is CT is always will have 100 by 5 or 1000 by 5, like that CT ratio. CT ratio is already I told you in the last classes. What is the standard ratio of CT? 1000 by 5, 100 by 5, 10 by 5, 5 amps is the second record. Under 500 amps, 2.5 amps will flow in the relay curve. This plunger is unable to move downwards because 2.5 amps is not enough to move the plunger downward. 2.5 amps is not enough to move the plunger downwards. That is, whenever suddenly fault occur, whenever sudden fault occur, assume that 500 amps is moving, if 1000 amps is there, 5 amps will flow. Whereas 500 amps is moving in this line, whenever 500 amps is going in this line, what is secondary of CT current is 2 pound. Assume that CT ratio is 1000 by 5. Now CT secondary is connected to relay coil. The relay coil carries the current 2.5 amps only. Whenever coil current flows, this plunger will not move downwards. You understand that? 2.5 amps is not enough to move the plunger downwards. Whenever fault occurs, now whenever fuse fault occurs, fault is symbol is indicated by like this. Whenever fuse fault appears in the transmission line or in the load side or when wherever, where whatever be the fault appears, different fault may be appear due to short circuit, due to line to line power fault, fuse current will means we can't predict the fault current. If you that is the 10,000 amps is flow, assume that 10,000 amps. What is the current here? 10,000 amps, it is 5 amps. 10,000 amps means 500 amps. 10,000 means it is a 1,000 into 10, it is 50 amps will flow. 50 amps will flow within this relay coil. 50 amps is a huge current to move the plunger downwards. This current enough to move the plunger downwards. What will happen? This contact will be closed. This contact will be closed. It is a plunger made with iron material or conducting material. This plunger closes the contacts of trip coil of circuit breaker. This contacts will be closed. Previously, the plunger in this condition. Now, the contacts are closed due to fault. Due to the fault, the plunger moved downwards because 50 amps is enough to move the plunger downwards. More magnetic field will be created in relay coil. It is a coil, more magnetic flux will be created due to more current. Because of the fault only, the more current will flow in relay coil. This moves downwards, the plunger. After that, the trip coil will be energized. Because previously, minus is not connected. Less is connected trip coil. When the plunger is in normally open condition, minus is not connected. 
whenever plus is connected and minus also connected due to the moment downwards moment of downwards of the plunger this contact will be closed these two contacts will be closed now it becomes closed a current will flow a current will flow plus to minus a current will flow due to the battery it is a battery it is a battery it will connect due to the battery a current will flow in this trip current whenever current flows through current due to the battery circuit breaker suddenly opens circuit breaker breaks hence the fault will be isolated faults is detected by the circuit breaker ct fault is detected by the ct after that the relay plunger moves downwards after that circuit breaker trip coil will disconnect the circuit breaker from the relay from the fault in this manner the relay works how the relay works how what is what is the relay relay is a piece of apparatus that detect the fault and initiate the circuit breaker to break the detect it detects the fault it is a total relay circuit it is circuit breaker it is a relay it is a total relay circuit a ct senses the fault how the ct senses the fault you can see whenever normal current normal condition a small current will flow or normal condition the plunger will not move under abnormal condition whenever fault appear in transmission line or in the in the apparatus then huge current will flow through this relay coil this relay coil move downwards the plunger which is mobile at that position these two contacts will be closed when the contact is closed the negative negative terminal of battery is connected to trip coil trip coil operates now open the circuit breaker instantly that means the trip coil circuit breaker opens the circuit breaker it is related to circuit breaker this is related to relay coil this is the basic principle of a relay okay for the power system protection what are the textbooks you can prefer now we go this is the principle of relay actually next we go for basic why again principle of relay how to the what are the requirements of a good relay for good relay what are the requirements and fundamental requirements for a good relay what are the different requirements uh, relay selectivity sensitivity how the relay has to operate like that after that we go now the textbooks for power system protection for reference purpose the cl work power systems cl work work is the one of the textbook on power system protection by vk mehta and rohit mehta that also you can you can check and another one static relays and micro passer based relays will be another one badri ram badri ram power system protection by badri ram you can check this textbook in your library that is the cl work and badri ram two textbooks are enough and cl work and vk mehta vk mehta also the textbook refer to confer power system protection you can check this uh, power system protection by cl work of vk mehta and badri ram badri ram is a textbook it is a good textbook it is also a standard textbook for reference purpose of students okay next class we go for what are the functional requirements of relay all this okay these are the textbooks you can refer for system protection thank you